News right now out of southeast Portland, where police have just confirmed to us that one person has died in a stabbing on 83rd Avenue. This is just a few blocks away from Lentz Park, and this is a live look there this morning where you can see that police tape uh, up over uh, several blocks there and officers in the area. We don't know much more than that right now, other than the call came in just before one this morning. So we're working to get more information and we'll pass along those updates. Also right now, some big news for the Portland metro area and our fight against COVID. This Friday, all three metro counties will be downgraded from the extreme risk level to high risk. Governor Kate Brown making that announcement yesterday. Overall, 12 Oregon counties have improved their risk levels as COVID infection rates have dropped in recent weeks. Well, now with Portland in that high risk category, it can loosen restrictions for indoor dining. That's right, Brenda. So again, like you mentioned, starting Friday, restaurants in Multnomah, Clackamas and Washington counties can let up to 50 people inside or fill up their dining rooms to 25% capacity, whichever of those two numbers is smaller. We spoke with some local restaurants to hear about their plans yesterday. Dan Lenzen is the co-owner of Dixie Tavern there in Northwest Portland, so he is not planning to reopen indoor dining this weekend. He says there are still too many unknowns. One of his big concerns is infection rates rising again and then the restaurant having to close again. The open close issue is a challenge for anybody in the hospitality industry because we ramp up and if we have to ramp it back down, um, it costs money to stop business. We should also mention when these counties move from extreme risk to high risk on Friday, gyms can extend their capacity limits, same as restaurants, and long-term care facilities in those counties will also be allowed to let visitors inside again. Well, let's talk about the vaccine because the signups started Monday, but today the first group of those 80 and older will actually start getting their shots. And the Woodburn Health Center is one of a few places in our area that still has appointments available. At last check, there are free slots for Friday as well as next Tuesday and next Wednesday, but only those who live and work in Marion County. You still have to go through the state portal, which is covidvaccine.oregon.gov. You can also find that link on our website. Now at the airport's drive through clinic and the convention center, all appointments are booked. We're told new slots for those could open tomorrow or Friday. The sign up system has caused a lot of confusion. First, it opened earlier than the health authority said it would, and then it was hard to get a spot after going through the whole process. You get to the end of those questions where you're supposed to be able to sign on for a time and a day there's no such thing available. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having to go to this site every day. It doesn't help. The good news is Oregon now expects to receive a boost in doses from the federal government over the next few weeks. Here's a breakdown of how things look in Oregon in terms of who is getting shots right now. 37% of those vaccinated are between 30 and 49 years old. So far, just under 20% of those vaccinated have been older than 70. That's because the state prioritized vaccinating teachers and healthcare workers before seniors. Let's get to three more things to know about the COVID vaccine this morning. Number one, if you need help getting to a vaccine appointment, Ride Connection is an option. Best part of that option, the rides are free. So they're available to anyone in the phase 1A or 1B group. The nonprofit says it has received a lot of requests here in the last few weeks and they expect those requests to continue to grow. You can find schedules, maps, and you can book a ride on the Ride Connection website. Number two this morning, a Portland church is stepping up to help seniors book vaccine appointments. They created an online toolkit with vaccine information and tips to book those appointments. They're connecting seniors to rides to the clinic as well. The people from the Madeline Parish came up with this fantastic idea, so credit goes to them. We have a link to their toolkit at KGW.com. And number three, the FDA is saying that vaccinations for children 12 to 15 years old could start this spring. For younger kids, it'll likely be months longer before that happens. Moderna and Pfizer are in the middle of trials right now. Health officials have said vaccinating kids is key to reaching herd immunity. And those are three things to know about the COVID vaccine this morning. Oh, we thought it was going to go away quickly and we didn't know anything compared to what we know now. 
Well, it's been a while since we've heard from Rebecca Frazier. She was the first Oregonian we talked to diagnosed with COVID, and she's giving us an update one year later. Rebecca had been on a cruise with her husband in Japan. A positive test put her in the hospital for almost a month. Morgan Romero caught up with her on Zoom. February 2020, the news hits of a virus spreading in Asia. Thousands were quarantined on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Japan after it was stricken with the novel coronavirus. Rebecca and Kent Frazier from Forest Grove were on the cruise and Rebecca was among hundreds who tested positive for the coronavirus. She only ever had mild symptoms, but was taken to a Tokyo hospital where she had to quarantine for 28 days. We checked in with the Frasers multiple times as the weeks went on. Kent never tested positive, but was kept on the ship for weeks. Then eventually he was allowed to wait at a Tokyo hotel. In March, seven and a half weeks after first getting on the cruise, they returned home. We caught up over Zoom this week. Did you feel like there was some stigma when you got back? Yes, absolutely. Especially when we first got back, I like I didn't want to go out in public. Our stress level increased faster than other folks, but everybody else caught up pretty quickly. But we were already on this you know, really high alert when we when we came home. Kent's employer Intel and Rebecca's employer Providence Health Plans allowed them to take leave. As for Princess Cruise Line, the Frasers say they handled it really well. Actually, they reimbursed them for the cruise expenses in Japan and along with the Japanese government also picked up medical bills. A year after her positive test, Rebecca is now fully vaccinated and the couple is just itching to, yes, go on a cruise again. In the newsroom, Morgan Romero, KGW News. Oh, they're ready to go. Okay. To politics now, and it's day two of former President Trump's impeachment trial. Today, the prosecution begins building a case that Trump incited last month's attack on the U.S. Capitol. Yesterday, House managers replayed the events of January 6th when a pro-Trump mob stormed the Capitol. But the former president's lawyers focused on the constitutionality of the trial, arguing that Trump can't be impeached now that he's out of office. Presidents can't inflame insurrection in their final weeks and then walk away. Presidents are impeachable because presidents are removable. Former presidents are not. Seven. The Senate decided the trial was constitutional in a largely party line vote. Six Republicans voted with Democrats. The trial is expected to last two days for each side to present their case. Then senators can ask questions. Oregon's U.S. attorney will be stepping down at the request of the Biden administration. Billy Williams last day is February 28th. He's one of many U.S. attorneys around the country who served under President Trump, now being asked to resign. U.S. Senators Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley will create a selection committee to interview and recommend new candidates for the job. The Biden administration has the final say on who takes over.